Okay, after about the 20th take, I finally nailed something down that I was happy enough to share with you guys. So in this video, uh, I've got three really short tips for you that I believe is going to help you with one of the most sought after techniques in the history of lead guitar, and that is sweet picking. It seems that everybody wants to sweet pick, myself included, and by no means am I a master at it, but the tips I'm going to share with you are things that have really helped me, and these are kind of like out of the box tips. They're things that I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about, if any. Now, this is not a lesson video. I just want to be clear. I'm not going to show you any exercises. I do have something for you at the end of this video after we have this short little chat about the tips I'm going to share with you. So we'll talk more about that. Uh, and actually, it's something that I'm in right now, and that's helping me as well. More about that at the end, so hang around for that. Let's jump right into this, guys. So first thing, and I have not really seen anyone talk about this. I'm sure there's videos on it. I probably just missed it or whatever, but uh, I want to talk about the type of guitar for sweet picking. Now, let me preface this by saying there is no best type of guitar or best guitar for sweet picking. There is, however, the best type of guitar for you for sweet picking. And let me tell you what I mean by that. I'm actually going to show you three guitars here. So check this one out here. This is my... Uh, and we all love talking about guitars anyway, so this is a really cool part of the video. We love our axes, man. This is my LTD M1000 Deluxe, and uh, it's a beast of a guitar. It is a metal guitar. No, it's not made of metal, but okay, bad pun. But I've had this thing since like, I think 2009, maybe 2010. But what I want to show you though is look at, look at the neck here, okay? Look at the neck on this. It's a little, not quite baseball bat. It's not like a Les Paul or anything, but it is a little thicker, okay, than the guitar that you saw me playing just a minute ago in the intro of this video. And, this, and I'll get to this guitar, okay? So look at the difference, though. Not extreme, but when you're when you're holding this thing, and I'm trying to line these up so you can see the difference in thickness, okay? Uh, when you're playing, when you're holding this thing, you notice the difference. But anyway. So this LTD M1000 Deluxe, now the, the fingerboard here is a little bit thinner. And let me hold this other guitar up again because I want to do, oh, I just hit my guitar on my chair. I didn't break anything. <laughs> I want to share the difference though. See, see this guitar I have in this hand right here that I'm shaking? Uh, that's a little bit wider of a fretboard, a fingerboard than this one here, the LTD, okay? One more thing about this LTD, okay? This thing, two more things actually. The neck is super fast. <laughs> it's just like, it almost plays itself. You like, you touch it and it's like, like, okay, that was cool. Yeah, I'm halfway joking about that, but it's super fast neck. And we've got jumbo frets. The other guitar I had uh, doesn't have the jumbo fret. These are like the extra jumbo frets here, okay? So to a lot of people, to a lot of guitar players, they would prefer this guitar for sweet picking because of everything that we just talked about. It's just, you know, it's almost effortless to sweet pick on this guitar. However, for me, it's it's not so much. I can sweet pick on here. But uh, it's not the best guitar for me for sweet picking. Now it's great for everything else, but for me, there's another preference I have. Now let me share one more guitar before I get to the one that I prefer for sweet picking. And where I'm going with this, guys, again, I'm not telling you what guitar you should pick. Uh, where I'm going with this, well, let's let's get there. Hold on. One more guitar I want to share with you before we get to the next one. Um, this is my, my German guitar, my Schroeder guitar. It's the Marksman 87. Uh, this was actually sent to me by Mike Schroeder himself. You guys have seen this in some videos. I'm going to be doing a full-blown review on this guitar. I've had it for probably about five or six weeks now, but I wanted to play it, you know, for a long time before I review this, okay? So uh, I'll be getting something out there on this guitar sooner than later. Now, look how thick this neck is. It's very similar to the guitar I just shared with you, okay? The LTD here. Let me turn these around this way, all right? Very similar. And actually, this, this Schroeder guitar, now that I see it, looks like I'm looking through playing peekaboo with you guys. <laughs> But this Schroeder guitar, actually, it's a little bit thicker than the LTD. Now, if we turn them side by side here, and I just hit the camera stand there. <laughs> I'm clumsy today. And this actually has a little bit, the Schroeder has a little bit wider of a fretboard, okay? So for sweet picking, I actually kind of like this guitar over the LTD for sweet picking, okay? 
Uh, another thing about this guitar, it is an ebony fingerboard here. Now the frets aren't jumbo. I, I actually like the jumbo frets on, maybe these are jumbo, but they're, they're not quite as jumbo as the ones that are on the LTD, which, you know, I kind of prefer the LTD frets, the jumbo frets that one has uh, for this specific technique, okay? But anyway, this is an awesome guitar, I love it. Again, I'm recording guitar tracks right now. I'm about to start doing that as soon as I finish this video, and I'll be sharing some of that with you guys later as well. Okay, so let me get to the next guitar, the final guitar I wanna share with you. This is my Ibanez Prestige RG1570 guitar, okay? Now, I already compared this to the LTD, and I could hold the Schroeder up to this as well. Let's just go ahead and do that, okay? Um, again, you see, you can really see the thickness difference, right, in the neck here. The Schroeder is much thicker, okay? Now, fingerboard. Uh, the Ibanez fingerboard is just a little wider than the Schroeder, just a little bit, okay? The frets are about the same, all right? So the frets on that, about the same thing. I mean, they're, they're both, I guess, considered jumbo frets, but again, they're not as jumbo as what I had on the LTD. I prefer this guitar, though, for sweet picking. For some reason, it fits my hands. I shouldn't say this guitar, this type of guitar. I prefer the thinner neck back here and the little bit wider fingerboard. Now, a lot of guitar players, this is not gonna work for them, okay? This is not gonna work for them for sweet picking because of the reasons I just mentioned. And it was just kinda odd to me at first that, okay, well, you know, after playing these guitars, and of course I just got the Schroeder, so I've been playing that <laughs> mainly lately because I love it, but going back and forth between guitars when it comes to sweet picking, this Ibanez here, again, because of things I mentioned, works best for me. Sorry, I had to get my coffee. So my point, guys, going back to this, and then we'll move quickly through the next two tips I wanna share with you. Uh, my point is you have to play multiple guitars, multiple types of guitars, uh, you know, with different necks, different fingerboards, that sort of thing. Now I should mention the Ibanez, let's go through one more thing here, because this is important, right? Uh, the, the Ibanez has passive pickups, these are actually the stock pickups, okay? That has passive pickups, so your, your output, of course, is not quite as hot. Um, the Schroeder here, this also has passive pickups, these are actually German pickups. Independent company makes these, which is really cool. Uh, so passive pickup, so the output's not quite as hot. Actually, the output's a little slightly less on this guitar than it is on my Ibanez, which that's good, and I'll, I'll share why in a second here. Then we've got the LTD I shared with you earlier. These babies are active EMGs. I believe they're the EMG 8185s. I hope I'm not wrong on that. Uh, but yeah, so these are active pickups. Obviously a hotter output. Now, I like passive pickups better for sweet picking. Doesn't mean that you can't sweet pick with active pickups. Plenty of people do it, they do it quite well. Again, this is this is very much a personal thing for you, okay? So I'm just trying to give you some things to think about. But why I like the passive so much is it keeps you a little bit more honest in your playing. Sometimes the active pickups, they're because of the high output, they can kind of get away from you a little bit and you know they can kind of cause maybe some unwanted noise and that sort of thing as you're playing when you're trying to play something that's this super fluid and clean like sweet picking. So again, that doesn't mean you should or shouldn't use active or passive pickups. I'm just giving you the reasons why I uh, choose certain guitars or certain types of guitars for this specific method. Now, one more thing, it doesn't mean that I won't sweet pick on the other guitars. I do, okay? It's just, if I had my preference, I would just use my Ibanez if I'm gonna be doing a lot of sweet picking for that particular solo, that's all. Tip number two, and this has to do with how you practice. So I encourage you, and again guys, these are just my tips. These are just my opinion, it's what works for me. Uh, I, I hope that it helps you. You may have different, you know, different feelings about certain things that I talk about, that's fine. I'm just sharing what's helped me uh, over the years, and you know, because I'm trying to get more proficient at this technique. So number two is to try practicing your sweeps mainly with distortion. You're probably gonna do that anyway, uh, but the reason I say that is most of the time, I would say if you want to reveal your weaknesses, then, then play that clean. Like if you're speed picking or doing anything else, I say if you really wanna reveal your weaknesses and see how good you are, play it clean because distortion, well, that covers up a lot of mistakes. In this particular case with the sweep picking technique, 
that distortion is going to reveal your weaknesses, okay? Because you're going to hear that unwanted noise in between those notes that are supposed to be so fluid, right? It's just a really smooth and fluid movement there. Well, you're going to hear every mistake with distortion. The other thing I'll say is also try practicing your suites with no effects, like no reverb, no delay, because the delay especially, that can cover up mistakes as well, or at least it can make the mistakes not sound is rough if that makes sense so that's okay when you're recording your solo or when you're playing live because you want delay on your solos that's perfectly fine and hey sometimes you want a little help when you're playing live because you've only got that one shot to pull it off but when you're practicing you want those mistakes revealed so that you can get better at them and correct them as you go so uh, when you're practicing maybe turn off that delay play distorted, that's going to reveal any mistakes or shortcomings that you have, and, and you can work on them properly from there. The third and final tip, and then we're going to get to the cool thing I've got to share with you guys. This is just my opinion, guys. Again, I, I know you're like, Jason, just get to the point, dude, just get to the tip, but I, I want to preface this by saying that, you know, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do this. I'm only saying this is what I do, and I'll tell you why. So when I practice, even when I'm practicing sweep arpeggios, uh, I usually either play something that leads into it that's not a sweep arpeggio or I will end with another type of lick. I'll kind of like combine that all together because if you just practice the arpeggio patterns, the sweep picking patterns and that's all you do, you'll have a very hard time going somewhere with it or playing something that leads into that and then all you're doing is just playing sweep arpeggios and it just starts to sound robotic and to me it it gets boring like really fast like and you guys know you you scroll through social media and like every other guitar player is just sweeping up and down the neck and it's like okay that's amazing at first but then eh, that novelty wears off after like i don't know 10 seconds maybe you're like can you do anything else <laughs> and you scroll down to the next one they're doing the same thing same thing same thing and all these people are playing different patterns and such and they're great it takes a lot of talent i'm not downing sweep picking i want to get better at it i am getting better at it but just be careful not to get stuck in that trap that that's all you do then you're just making music for other guitar players to say oh look you can sweep pick or she can sweep pick really cool rather than making music and creating guitar solos that really captivate people that's the difference see the sweep picking technique is really something that maybe you don't want to use all the time but something you want to pull out of that back pocket every now and then and then bring it back okay so that's why I will add something before and after and real quick I want to share this short little clip that was in the intro of what you heard you'll, you'll hear how I do something first before that sweet picking pattern and I'll do something after that so check this out <laughs> I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do this. This is just how I like for my guitar solos to be portrayed. I like them to tell a story, to take the listener on a journey. I don't really care to just, you know, throw up a bunch of notes on them. That's just me. You may have different feelings about that, and that's okay, all right? I'm, I'm a big fan of to each their own, but I just wanted to share that with you. That may help some of you. Some of you, it might not. Some of you, you might find it best to practice the patterns, and again, that is okay. Now the cool thing that I'm going to share with you is actually a course that I'm taking right now that has, has tremendously helped me get from a certain level that I have felt like I was stuck at and I'm starting to finally kind of break past that. Uh, but it's called Sweet Picking Master and you guys may know this dude. He is one of the absolute coolest dudes out there on the planet but he's also one of the best guitar teachers on YouTube. And I actually have a link to his course in the description of this YouTube video here. Uh, you guys may know him already. His name is Alfred Potter. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you guys are already following his YouTube channel. Uh, along with a link to his course, I'll leave a link to his channel as well. So make sure you check both of those out. Again, that's in the description of this video. Now, Sweet Picking Master is part of the Metal Mastermind platform. You guys know I co-own that with Ken Candelas, and that's where my guitar courses are hosted as well. A lot of you have Metal Riff Master, and a lot of you are also in my beginner's course, Metal Guitar Apprentice. And thank you, by the way, thank you so much for the support. We decided to team up with Alfred late 2021 to create this course. I actually sought him out personally because I've been following his channel almost <laughs> since probably since the channel started and so it's been years now and I just I love his laid-back approach 
and he's truly passionate about showing you how to do something, right? He's not one of those, he's got the skills. He's one of the best lead guitar players out there, period, hands down. Much better at sweet picking than I am, which is why this course is not my course, and that's why Alfred's teaching it, because <laughs> he's, he's gonna give you a lot more value in sweet picking than I could ever dream of giving you. Uh, I can show you my tips and that sort of thing and what's helping me, but he's going to take you through how to master this, which again is why I'm going through the course as well. But yeah, definitely check that out guys. Uh, Alfred, he's, he's just got this way about him to show you how to perform this technique. He gives you all the preliminary things that you need, like how to hold your pick, how to get that fluid motion with the wrist and you know it just all kind of stuff in there. Things I didn't even think about like when I first started trying to play this technique which I've been trying to <laughs> I've been trying to get better at sweet picking for well I'd say decades now. I'm an old guy man. I've been playing guitar since 1989. Like many of you sweet picking is is one of those things that it's just very difficult for some people to get down. I'm one of those people. I'll freely admit that. So you know, the best way to learn is, is to learn by someone who is a lot better than you. Alfred is, you know, he's a lot better sweet picker than I am. So, and I, I love his style and I love what he can do. So I am learning so much in his course. So yeah, uh, that is in the description. The link to that course is in the description of this video. And again, if, you, uh, if you're if you not following Alfred's channel, definitely go to his YouTube channel and, and subscribe. Uh, he's got a lot of cool content out there. Just, guys, he's just a cool dude. I mean, those of you who already subscribed to his channel, you know how cool he is, and I know I'll, I'll come back and I'll read comments. Yeah, Alfred's the coolest. He's so cool and laid back. But he has a really just awesome way at explaining everything and taking you through the process step by step. So uh, check that out. Links are in the description. And hey, guys, if you have any questions about the tips that I gave you today, uh, please leave those in there. You know, like I said, some of the stuff um, that might work for you, some of it might not. I'm just sharing what, what has helped me. Uh, go from one level to the next and I'm still trying to go to the next level as well with this particular method like I said I you know I've had trouble with it so I'm really glad Alfred uh, Alfred agreed to make this course again that's out there guys uh, if you have questions leave them in the comments please give this video a like and uh, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and guys I will see you on the next video until then you know what to do keep it metal <laughs>